This speaker is Neville Johnson. Uh, he, he was a seer and he walked with God. Uh, he, he saw everything. Uh, the, the Lord would come and sit with him um, just about every day um, and talk with him and counsel him and minister to him and leave, um, give him mis different missions to go on. Um, the Lord would leave an imprint where he sat. I mean, the Lord would come physically and sit with him. So that's how close he was with God. Uh, he, he passed away uh, in September 2019, but he's a last days and times minister, and he's been to heaven many a times. Um, he's, he's been uh, uh, counseled by Job. He met Job, Paul, a lot of the um, you know Old, Test uh, Old and New Testament saints. Um, he uh, is friends with um, the the 24 elders in in heaven. Um, the Council of Abraham, and um, he's been down into hell uh, to, to retrieve um, King Solomon's crown, which is the mantle of wisdom, and he went back up and gave it to the Lord. Uh, angels would come and take him on missions all the time. He's been in Queen Elizabeth's castle. He had to, uh, he showed up one day and, uh, and met with her. They, she was shocked. He was shocked. But the Lord had a message for her. He gave it to her, and she went ahead and uh, did what the Lord asked her to do. And so, um, and those are those are just a couple of um, things that He's done. But uh, He um, He was sent here to prepare us for these 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 next this next decade, because like I said, it's the end times. The Antichrist is coming on the scene, getting ready to come on the scene. The uh, one world government, cashless society. One world, one world religion, all of that, and he wants to. He's supposed. He's preparing us for those things, our minds and our hearts for those things, so that we're not totally dumbfounded and shocked. And it's time to press in and um, get rid of the the doubt. Now it's time to really trust and believe in God because we're really going to need to uh, do that um, here. Uh, if you've never done it before, it's really time to get to the point where you do trust and believe in God for every single thing that happens in your life so you can be a strong pillar for your family and for your church and so try to l listen and learn a little bit more every day you know down in the description area is a, is a bunch of uh, um, channels that you can learn from um, every day and uh, also in my play uh, the playlist on this channel also too and if you'd like to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you like and um, give a thumbs up so the people around the world can get this vital information teaches it teaches you how to live and you got to do it a little at a time because there's so much information it's jam-packed with information you guys have a great day in the mighty name of jesus christ today we're going to be talking about living in the kingdom because we're now living in a kingdom age a new phase of the purposes of god and in the history of the church and today i want to talk to you about a, a phrase that comes from a particular scripture it's called a new and living way. In Hebrews 10, in verse 19, it says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness, holy place by the blood of Jesus. Verse 20, by a new and living way. So we can enter into the holiest, into the presence of God by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil. In the other words, on the other side of the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Okay? Now, the concept of living in the kingdom of God while still in the flesh on this earth was foreign to the disciples. They, they didn't understand it. They were ex expecting a literal kingdom in their day to be formed in the earth that Jesus was overthrow the Roman Empire and that he would set up his kingdom in, in, in physically in this earth and uh, you know Jesus clearly said to them my kingdom is not on this realm it's in a different realm in John 18 and verse 36 Jesus answered and said my kingdom is not of this world okay if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, and over, in other words, overthrow the Roman Empire, that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Okay, 
they were expecting a whole different scenario. And Jesus was talking about a different kingdom, a kingdom that was beyond the natural senses of man. And so we know that when Jesus was in the earth, he walked in two different realms. Well, he walked in this physical realm, but he also walked in the unseen spiritual realm. And uh, he clearly indicated that it was possible to live in both worlds. Now, this was really hard for the disciples to understand and grasp. It's so hard that, you know, in John three twelve, Jesus said, if I've told you of earthly things and you don't believe me, how shall I tell you of the unseen realm, heavenly things? And, and uh, John three thirteen, and no man hath ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. I talk about a con contradictory uh, phrase here. In other words, Jesus was saying, while he is on earth, he's still in heaven. Basically, that's the bottom line of what he was saying. And this was really, it was hard for the disciples to understand this. And so, later he said in Luke 17, 21, Neither shall they say, Lo, here is the kingdom, or there is the kingdom. Now he said something else that kind of blew them away again. He said, But the kingdom of God is inside you. You think, well, hang on a minute. They're looking for a kingdom. Sure, they might grasp a little bit that it's a spiritual kingdom. But then Jesus went further and said, this kingdom is inside you. Now that poses a whole new scenario. You know, it has been suggested by some that the word within you should be translated among you. Um, but that's not so. That's not true. However, the Greek word here for within is entos. And it simply means within you. There's no other way around it. It's just within you. What Jesus said, he phrased it right. The kingdom of God is within you. Now, the translators got it right when they translated the Greek word as within. Um, the Greek word within, but they couldn't conce conceive that concept. And so it is around you, among you, the kingdom of God. And so they changed it quite slightly there. And... Uh, the kingdom of God exists in a spiritual realm. Understand that. Man is not just, you are not just a physical being. All right? In fact, the main part of you is not physical. There is a part within us which is spirit, spiritual, lives in a different realm to our physical body. But it's alive, it's our spirit, it's the hidden man of the heart within us. The kingdom of God exists in a spiritual realm, and the kingdom of God is within you. So, man is not just a physical being. That's part of man, but he's not just physical. And he is a spiritual being as well. The real you is your spirit on the inside. And it's referred to in the scriptures as a hidden man of the heart. In 1 Peter 3, 8, it says, But let it be the hidden man of the heart, now listen, which is not corruptible. All right. For which cause we faint not, First 2 Corinthians 4, 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish is perishing, yet our inward man is renewed every day. So there's two different people here enclosed together. Your spirit man and your physical man. Now, our outward man, the inward man rather, does not list, does not exist as in what we call time and space. It doesn't exist there, it's spiritual. The kingdom of God, literal kingdom of God does not exist in time and space because it's spiritual. And it can travel at the speed of thought. Think about that. Everything in the spiritual realm tra can travel at the speed of thought. Think about it and you're there. When you're in heaven, if you think about being at a certain place, you're instantly there. 
you also have the ability to slow that down. But you have that ability. Instantly, you can be there. Yeah, the hidden man of the heart, your spirit, which is not corruptible. The outward man perishes. The inward man is renewed every day. So, when a person dies, we know their spirit leaves their body. Now, the spirit doesn't exist in time or space like we do, okay? It lists in what we call eternity. And it has all the capabilities of a spiritual being. So, when a person dies, their spirit leaves their body. The spirit of that person is a complete person, far more superior than your physical body. It is complete, but in spirit form. Now, once out of the physical body, you're dead and your spirit comes out of your physical body, you can see clearly everything in the spiritual realm. That spirit can see angels, demons, everything clearly in the spiritual realm. However, when it's still inside of you and you're not dead and the spirit is inside of you, there is a veil. It can see in the spiritual realm, but you can't with the physical. Now that poses a problem. It's kind of, in, the, in one sense, imprisoned there. But it's, it can see everything in the spiritual realm going on around you, angels, everything. But you, the outer man, can't. You see, because we are so dominated by our physical body with its senses of sight, hearing, touch, taste, smell, and our natural mind, which is, the Bible says, an enemy of God, um, we don't see into the other realm. We do not perceive what our spirit is perceiving. I don't know if that frustrates our spirit or not, but we can't see what it is seeing. Now, the question arises now, how do we meld with our spirit so that we can perceive what he is perceiving? How can we live in those two realms at the same time, like Jesus did and while still on earth? You know, we're told to come before the throne of God with our requests. Well, well how do we do that? You see? Um, how can we do it? Kingdom living requires that we have access to both realms, both kingdoms, this earthly kingdom and the heavenly kingdom. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find help in a time of need. Now notice it says, come boldly. In other words, you can do this. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all with an open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. By holding, by seeing something, we are changed. That's what it says here. Like looking in a mirror. Not real to our natural mind. But it is there. When you look in the mirror, you will have a reflection back. That's like looking into the realm of the spirit so the bible is full of examples of men and women who walk with god and they are there their examples are there to show us that what they did we can now in genesis 3 8 it says they heard the sound of the lord what was that they found heard the sound of the lord his footsteps now, remember, he's spiritual. This is the spirit being the Lord. They heard his footsteps. It wasn't in this natural realm. But they heard something was in the spiritual realm. Genesis 12, 1. The Lord said to Adam. See, Adam heard that. Acts 8, 28. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Now, all these happened for our example. If they did it, we can. Now, Revelation 1.10, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice. 
behind me. I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and I saw seven golden candlesticks. And look at it is a process. He heard a voice, and he turned to see what that voice was. When he turned to see it, the spirit realm opened up. There was an action that created a reaction. There was an action which opened up the realm. You see, I was in the spirit of the Lord's day, and I turned to see what, where that came from. When he made an effort, when he turned to see, he heard something, he turned to see it, it opened up. Now, he turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment, and so on. You know the story. It says in Exodus 33, 11, Moses talked with God face to face. Now it's Old Testament. Acts 8 and verse 40, Philip was transported to a distant town at the speed of thought. And it was many, many miles away. When you look at the difference between where he was and the town that he found himself, he was transported instantly to a different town. This is the realm, this is the kingdom of God which is within you. Enoch walked with God and was translated. The Bible tells us that it's possible to taste of the powers of the age to come and walk in them. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 5. You see, we, we push all those things away. Oh, that was in the Bible. That was totally supernatural. It doesn't happen to us today. That All of these things happen for our example, so that we can do the same. The problem is, in the past, you know, people, teachers, theologians, when they cannot ex explain something, they just put it into the realm of the spirit. It's not real to us in this physical realm. You know, when we're told in Hebrews 4.16, which I said, we tells us we can come to the throne of God as often as we want. But to see, we've been told, well, that's not literal because you can't go to heaven. Well, the Bible doesn't say that it's not literal. It just states it. What do you believe? The Bible? You know? The Apostle Paul was a really highly educated man. I mean, he, he was very, very bright, believe me. He was bright highly educated he was actually one of the pharisees would you believe and he came to realize that truth does not come by any other way but by revelation when he understand that his whole life began to change you know he said in, in philippians uh, 3 5 a paul he was circumcised he went through all the rituals he was circumcised the eighth day of the stock, a lineage of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. In other words, he really was a Jewish person. With all the law and everything, touching the law, he was a Pharisee. In other words, a stickler for it, highly educated. Concerning zeal in persecuting the church. But what things he said were gain to me, what I was taught, what I learned. I count it as lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them as done nothing. So all of his education in the past, he said it didn't help me at all in my walk with the Lord. That's amazing, you know. Highly trained, Pharisee, well-educated, intellectual, but he realized that this did not help him know the Lord and understand the scriptures. Paul later, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said this, because the carnal mind, the natural mind in Romans 8, 7, is an enemy of God. The word enmity means enemy against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither can be. So they that are in the flesh, the natural mind, cannot please God. 
doing to please God. It says those who live and operate in a natural mind cannot please God. The word enmity is the Greek word um, uh, ethra, which means in opposition to God. That's simply what it means. Opposes the things of God. The natural mind opposes the things of God. So a lot of what we've been taught comes from the natural mind. Oh, you can't do that. Maybe when you get to heaven, you can do that. Comes from the natural mind. We spiritualize a verse of scripture. When we do that, we change the literal meaning. You know, what Paul was saying here was not a parable. It was for real. We are told that God wants to, the Lord wants to become our friend. John 15, 14. How does that work? How do you become a friend to an invisible spirit? How do you become a friend to someone you can't see? But he said very clearly. So Paul went on in 2 Corinthians 4. It says why we, 2 Corinthians 4, 18. It says, why we look not at things which are seen. That's this physical realm all around us. That at things which are not seen. <clears throat> For the things which are seen, they're temporal. Everything. The room you're in now, where you're on now, the car you're driving now is temporal. Won't last forever. The thing which, uh, the, the thing, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. They'll vanish in the end. But the things which are not seen, which you don't see with these physical eyes, that's the eternal realm. It will go on forever. Now, how does that work? Well, Paul said it's possible to look at things which, to the, which in the natural we can't see. All right, there is a spiritual realm. Your spirit sees it, everything in your spirit realm, but you, you live in this physical realm, and you're being brought up in a physical realm, toward everything in a physical realm. And that's all you know, this physical realm. The two realms, spirit and the physical, exist together. One is unseen to the natural mind and natural eye. The other is clearly seen by your spirit, with your spirit. The problem is we've lived so long in this natural realm. Oh, dear. That it's become the main realm to us, the only realm to us. You know, the, we look at out-of-the-body experiences which have been documented over the years, and you know, well documented. And um, in these experiences, it becomes clear that when the natural, the physical realm is gone, a spiritual realm opens up. When you come out, it comes out of your body. There is a spiritual realm, another realm altogether, another world altogether. You know... The interaction between that unseen realm and this physical realm is something we have to learn. Elijah, Moses, Enoch, Paul, all John, all learned to operate in both realms. Now, the Holy Spirit is joined to our spirit. The Bible tells us that. He is joined to the Lord, one flesh, one spirit, rather. And the but it's somewhat has barriers keeping it in. So what are those barriers? You know, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. But it's a spirit we're not so much aware of. It's buried between, behind bars of unbelief, carnality, rebellion, and our soul life predominates. So we live in this physical realm all the time. And this is the experience of most Christians, but it doesn't have to be. Walking under an open heaven is supposed to be God's normal for us. But because we don't believe this, we don't experience it. Without faith, you can't even please God, the Bible says. 
This is where Jesus was when he walked on the earth and the heaven at the same time. John 1, 51, and he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you'll see the heavens open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Apostle Paul had these problems, had problems with the Corinthian church. Now, the Corinthian church, the Bible says, moved in all of the gifts of the Spirit. So they were Pentecostal. They moved in all of the gifts of the Spirit, and but he had some massive soulish problems with them. In 1 Corinthians 3, 1, he said, Brethren, I couldn't speak unto you as spiritual people. Wow. But unto carnal, natural people, just as babes are in Christ. But they move. We're moving on all of the gifts of the Spirit. Interesting. He said, I fed you with milk, 1 Corinthians 3, 2, and not with meat. For you're not able to even bear any deeper truth. Well, it's a Pentecostal church, Corinthian church. For you are natural, carnal. For whereas there is among you envy, strife, divisions, you're just walking with normal men. <laughs> okay, carnality in the souls of these people. Moving in all of the gifts of the Spirit. Healing, gifts of healing, all of those gifts. But they were just carnal Christians. They had an out court relationship with the Lord. They knew nothing of intimacy in relationship with the Lord. And Jesus warned us, you know, very clearly about this. When he said in Matthew 7 and verse 22, he said, Many will say in that day, when they stand before the Lord, we have prophesied in your name, cast demons out in your name. There are many wonderful works. Jesus said, I didn't even know you. Who are you? Pentecostal church. Moving in the gifts of the Spirit. He's not talking about occultists here. He's talking about a Pentecostal church. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. It was not the gospel of the church. It was the gospel of the kingdom. We're told to pray, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We would say, oh, well, Jesus is returning. He's not here talking about the return of Jesus. Thy kingdom come in earth now like it is in heaven. But we say, oh, that's not for now. That's just for the return of Jesus. But the Bible doesn't say that. Now listen to me. Our citizenship, the Bible says, is in heaven. Now think about that. Our citizenship, Paul said, is in heaven. So that's where you originate it. Obviously, if your citizenship is in America, uh, Ireland, England, Australia, wherever, that's where you originated, right? That's your citizenship. That's where you were born. But he said your real citizenship is not here. It's in heaven. Think, okay. But well, that's where I originated. And I came here. This is not my original home. I keep that thought in mind. Now, how do we remove the veils? Not that complicated, but we'll deal, deal with this over the next few weeks. But in 1 Peter 1.22, it says, Seeing that you purified your souls in obeying the truth. Whoa, hang on. He's purified their soul. It's the soul that gets in the way of us moving in the realm of the spirit. You see, the soul, our mind, our emotions, and our will stop our awareness of the spirit. We are so soulish. But he said, that's Peter 1.22, but seeing you have purified your soul in obeying the truth. Okay, what truth? Through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. He said, okay, you have purified your soul and obeying this one truth. And it's the truth of 
of love. See, the veil can be, dis can be taken down, but the condition of our soul determines whether those veils remain there or they dissolve. You know when you were born again, your soul wasn't born again? Your physical body wasn't born again. What was born again? Your spirit. Now it says work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So you've got a soul that's anti your spirit. Once your soul is purified and it has to, the purification is it becoming like God is God is love becoming. The veils drop out. It's not complicated. Now Jesus said unto them, Matthew 22 to 37, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. See, that's your soul. Your mind, your emotions, your heart. Your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like unto this. You will love your neighbor as yourself. And you know, your neighbor anyone you come in contact with. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Not complicated. A soul is not saved at the new birth. It is purified in obeying the commandments of God. I shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and everyone else with a pure heart. When you're, now listen to me, when our soul has the same nature as our redeemed spirit, you get access to the realm of the spirit. Now, the cultists get access another way, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the kingdom of God and the people of God. When our soul has the same nature, it's being purified where it has the same nature as our redeemed spirit, the veils drop out. And you start to operate in a whole different dimension. Purity of soul determines the degree to which the veils are removed. You know, then you have access, a greater access to the reality of that invisible friend, the Lord Jesus. A new and a living way, a different way of living, totally different. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest of all by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, a different way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil. In other words, we can come there. Jesus said in John 18, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my disciples would fight and help and overthrow the Roman Empire. But my kingdom is not of this world. If he said, if I told you of earthly things and you don't believe me, how about when I tell you of spiritual things, you're never going to believe me. See, we have access. And uh, we just starting to talk about this uh, in the coming weeks we'll talk about it a bit more but Jesus is saying that here while on earth he was also in heaven he could switch between the two realms just like that switching and now but there has to be a compatibility between spirit and soul in order for those veils to begin to disappear Either say there is the kingdom, or over here is the kingdom. The kingdom of God exists in your spirit. That's your access to the kingdom of God. That's where your king spirit came from. That's where your citizenship is, and you'll have a right to return anytime you wish and access that realm. So visit the Academy of Light on YouTube or the World Wide Web to get more teachings like this or just go to the playlist and try to do it every day. God bless you guys in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.